Hello guys and welcome back. If you're new around here, I do mostly Australian true crime videos and today we are looking at another solved case and that is the case of Tiali Palmer. So let's just get straight into today's case. In 2015, Tiali Alyssa Rose Palmer, also known as Tia to friends and family, was a 12-year-old schoolgirl who lived in Queensland, Australia. And I'm going to be referring to Tiali as Tia throughout this video. She was described as creative, adventurous and a free spirit and she also loved to dance. Tia's joyous nature meant she easily made friends with those she met. Her friend Mia Sky Fingst said that Tia made our world full with joy and happiness. We did everything together, like get in trouble together, messed around a lot, play games. Tia did not have the easiest of starts to her life, however. Growing up, she lived with her mother, Cindy, until she was seven years old. According to Cindy, she was in a severe domestic violence situation and she felt like the best and only decision she had at that time was to put her daughter Tia in foster care. After that point, Cindy's life really began to spiral out of control, developing a drug addiction and even being homeless at one point. She really believed that Tia was better off without her and in the foster system as she tried to get her life back together. Due to this, Tia spent a lot of time in and out of foster homes until about 2013 when she was placed in foster care with Julie Pemberton. Tia's life began to really stabilize when she was placed with Julie and she actually remained with her foster mom, Julie, for two years. In 2015, Tia was sent to live with the Thorburn family after Julie gave up fostering children altogether. I couldn't find out why, but she did keep in touch with Tia. So the Thorburn family was made up of Rick and Julene Thorburn, who were both in their 50s and they were the parents. And they had two sons. They had Joshua, who was 19 years old, and Trent, who was 18 years old. And the Thorburns had actually fostered several children before fostering Tia. Rick was a truck driver and Julene ran a daycare center from the family's home called Miss Julene's Family Daycare. The two boys, Trent and Josh, were both amateur dancers. At the time, Josh was actually working for the family's daycare center as he had some sort of injury and was unemployed at that time. And Trent was a metal fabrication apprentice. As well as the family's daycare center, they also ran a American style or an American themed food truck called Nothing healthy here. Each member of the Thorburn family also held a blue card, which is, to my understanding, the Queensland version of a working with children permit. The Thorburn family also happened to live on a beautiful and a large two hectare rural property that was semi-isolated in Logan City, which was located south of Brisbane. This property was really the perfect place to raise children and for children to run around and play. The property also had a pool and a horse paddock full of horses, as Julene was described as horse mad. And the home was nooked in between several strawberry farms. Tia absolutely loved the horses on the property and by all accounts, she was living her dream life with the Thorburns. She even had her very own bedroom in the family's four bed, two bath home. From the outside, it really appeared that Tia's life was finally beginning to fall into place. She had been placed with a loving, large family, had two new big brothers, and was living on a property that most children would dream of growing up on. However, during what would be her 10 month stay with the Thorburns, she ran away 10 times. And remember, she was only 12 years old. Tia would also occasionally skip school. Tia's former foster mother, Julie Pemberton, came to find out that Tia actually hated her new foster home, but she never found out the reasons as to why this was. Tia's biological grandmother also said that Tia was offered a place to stay with her biological mother, Cindy, 
but that Tia rejected it because she loved the horses on the Thorburn property and that apparently she had a crush on Trent. Now take that piece of information with a grain of salt because I only found that piece of information in one or two sources. It did turn out that Tia was keeping a secret from almost everyone in her life including her foster mother, her previous foster mother Julie that is, and her biological mother. And that was that she was living a nightmare behind closed doors at the Thorburn family home. Not only was her foster father Rick incredibly controlling and feared by every member of his family behind closed doors, but Tia's foster brother Trent, who was 18 years old, had been sexually abusing Tia. Tia had told only one friend about what was going on and that was that when nobody was home, Trent would sexually abuse her. In late September of 2015, Trent Thorburn actually confessed to his cousin via a text message about what had happened between himself and his foster sister Tia and he feared that Tia may be pregnant. However, Trent's story was a little different to what Tia had told her friend. Trent had told his cousin that when nobody was home, Tia threatened him for him to have sex with her or she said she would kill his dog. Trent also told his cousin that he had never had sex before. He told his cousin that he just wanted Tia out of his life, but he also knew that Tia was a source of income for his parents, Rick and Julene. The cousin encouraged Trent to tell his parents what had been happening. I am not sure if Trent ever directly told his parents, but Trent's cousin definitely did tell Julene Thorburn and Julene went on to tell her husband Rick about the fact that their youngest son Trent had had sex with an underage well, a, a child and that there was a possibility that A. Tia was pregnant but B. They knew that their son would go to jail or could go to jail for this. I'm not sure what version of events the Thorburn family chose to believe, whether they believed that Tia had manipulated Trent or if Trent had manipulated Tia. Either way, they were fearful for their son's reputation. Within days of these confessions and conversations taking place, Tiali Palmer would be dead. On the 30th of October 2015, which was a Friday, Tia was heading off to school like any other day. Rick had said Tia was happy and sprightly that morning and he said that this made him happy because it meant it was going to be a good day for Tia and for his family. Rick dropped Tia off at school that morning at the school she attended which was Marsden State High School. According to Rick, he dropped her off at 8, 10 a.m. that morning. He stopped his car for approximately 30 seconds for Tia to get out the vehicle and continue driving. He also said he saw Tia meet up with a friend or run into a friend and they both walked into school together. So Rick then continued driving to run a few errands before returning home that day. However, Tia never made it into school that day. Nobody saw her and she never attended any of her classes. There were a few false sightings of Tia, but ultimately she was never ticked off her school role in any of her classes and there was no confirmed sightings. Just before lunchtime that day, one of the school's counsellors called the Thorburn family home to let them know that Tia had not been in school that day. Rick answered the phone, but he wasn't too concerned as it wasn't out of character for Tia to skip school occasionally or run away. Something peculiar that did happen at the Thorburn family home that day though according to Josh was or Joshua was that he was told not to go into his sister's bedroom that day. That evening Rick Thorburn was posting on his Facebook page about Tia's disappearance giving the impression that 
The Thorburn family believed Tia had indeed run away of her own accord. He posted on his Facebook page, If any of her friends are hiding her again, please do the right thing and let us know. She needs to come home where she belongs. When Tia's biological mother, Cindy, was informed about her disappearance, she said that alarm bells started to ring through her head. And although, as I said, Tia had run away before, this time Tia was gone for almost a full day. Usually Tia would only disappear for a few hours. Tia was also reported missing to police that same day. And as I said, Tia had run away multiple times. She'd been away for a few hours before, but this was quite unusual for her to be missing from the morning to late in the evening. And this time, the hours would eventually turn into days. Six days after Tia's disappearance, on November the 5th, police held a press conference asking the public for any information that they may know as to the whereabouts of Tiali Palmer. And this was the first time that the police were going public with Tia as a missing person. Although I can't confirm this and I didn't read it anywhere, I am assuming that the police did treat Tia's case as a missing person's case for at least the first few days before taking it a little more seriously because she did have a history of running away. Later that same day on November the 5th, three fishermen found female human remains thought to be between the age of 12 and 18 years old. The body was found on the bank of the Pimpama River and the body was found naked apart from a pair of underwear which was slightly pulled down and the body was also very badly decomposed. The next day, which was November the 6th, the remains were identified and found to be those of Tiali Palmer. Her body was found 30 kilometers south of where she was last seen. Due to the state of her body, it was not possible to determine how Tia was killed. Police began an extensive search for any further clues in the investigation, including Tia's school uniform and backpack, neither of which were found with or near the body. And to this day, neither of these items have ever been found. The only item of Tia's to actually be recovered was a single school shoe found on December the 4th near where her body was found. And I don't think that it was confirmed to be Tia's school shoe, but it was thought likely to be her school shoe. Tia's funeral was held on November the 8th and was attended by more than 600 people. Many of the mourners wore purple, which was Tia's favorite color. Tia's small white coffin had six pallbearers, one of them being Rick Thorburn. Rick was wearing one of the t-shirts that several of the funeral attendees chose to wear, which was a purple t-shirt bearing Tia's name surrounded by a white heart. Trent and Joshua were even part of a dance routine, which was performed in honor of Tia. Tia's biological grandmother, who was also at the funeral, recalls that the Thorburn family at Tia's funeral took, quote, pride of place and people treated them as though they were parents of long standing, which they weren't. Initially, investigators had very little to go off. They had no forensic evidence due to the decomposition of the body. They also really had no suspects and no one they could think of that would have motive to, to, to kill an innocent little girl. Rick Thorburn was actually an early suspect in the investigation, but at some point during the year-long investigation, he was ruled out. However, a tip eventually does come through, and this tip shines a spotlight on the entire Thorburn family. The text conversation between Trent and his cousin about Trent having sex with Tia 
comes to the attention of the investigators. The text conversation in which Trent declares that he wishes he could get rid of Tia out of his life really gets the attention of investigators and sparks a very close investigation of the whole Thorburn family. Listening devices are placed in the Thorburn family home and one of these listening devices actually picks up the mother, Julene, telling her two sons to stick to the story of seeing Tia that morning going to school on the morning that everyone believed she had disappeared. The listening device also picks up Rick telling Trent what to say to police in regards to the sexual abuse and it picks up a conversation between Julene and Joshua where they talk about coming clean. More than 60 detectives were working on Tia's case in the earlier stages of the investigation and they were all working off the assumption that Tia had been dropped off at school that morning and of course the Thorburn family, every single member confirmed they had seen Tia that morning before school but in fact this turned out to be a lie. Police also interviewed dozens of people in relation to Tia's death and trawled through hundreds of hours of CCTV footage. And they did find one interesting thing when they were trawling through all of this CCTV footage and it turned out that Rick Thorburn did not drop Tear off that morning to school. He had indeed driven the school route to drop her off, stopped for about six seconds and then continued driving and he did indeed carry on all of the errands he claimed to have carried out and returned home but he never dropped Tia off. After Tia's death the Thorburns did not foster any more children but they did continue to run their at-home daycare center until about April of 2016 which was six months after Tia's death. It came to light during this time that Rick Thorburn had been charged but not convicted of the sexual abuse of two children under the age of 12 and these two children attended their at-home daycare center. And of course as you would imagine the Thorburns Family daycare centre approval was revoked along with their foster care approval being suspended. In September of 2016, just under a year after Tia's death, Rick Thorburn's car that he used to own was seized by police and forensically examined. On September the 20th, the entire Thorburn family, Rick, Julene, Joshua and Trent were taken, taken into police custody for questioning. Meanwhile, police officers were actually digging up the Thorburns family property, looking for Tia's backpack or uniform. Soon after the family are taken into police custody, Rick Thorburn is charged with the death of Tiali Palmer and with interfering with her corpse. It is soon revealed exactly what happened to Tiali. It's believed that Rick smothered Tia to death in the family home in her own bedroom on the evening before the family claimed to have last seen her heading off to school on that Friday morning. Her cause of death can really never be 100% confirmed due to the state that her body was found in. No one was home when Rick killed Tia that night as Rick had actually asked his whole family to leave the house that night. However, Julene Thorburn had been part of this sick and twisted plan to cover up her son's sexual relationship with a minor. Julene stated in her police questioning, it was more about protecting us, our family, our lifestyle and our upstanding in the community. Although Julene had not physically taken part in killing Tia, she had been aware that it did happen after the fact. Although Julene did claim she didn't realise her husband 
was planning to kill Tia that night. She says that if she had known, she would not have left the house. The next day after Tia was killed, her lifeless body was loaded into Rick's blue Ford Falcon. Again, Julene did not participate. Rick took a very pacific way to get to the Pimpama River. He took a way in which there were no cameras that could track him and he did not take his mobile phone so that couldn't track him either. Rick's sons, Trent and Joshua, were not home on the evening that Tia was killed and they were not home when Tia's body was disposed of. In fact, Rick had actually told his sons to be out and be in places where they could be seen. Rick told his boys not to ask him questions and said that the less they knew, the better. After Tia had been disposed of by Rick, Rick sat his two sons down and said to them, Tia is no longer with us. I hope you understand what that means. And Joshua actually told police during his questioning that he did understand that it meant his father had killed Tia. So it can be concluded that although only one person in the Thorburn family, as far as we know, participated in killing Tia, whether everyone else knew it was going to happen or not, they all knew after it had happened that Rick had killed Tia. Yet not one of them came forward. Not Julene, not Joshua, and not Trent. Not long after his arrest, Rick actually collapsed and was placed in an induced coma for several days. And it was later revealed that Rick did try to take his own life by overdosing on pills. Eventually, Trent Thorburn was charged with two counts of perjury attempting to pervert the course of justice and incest. Trent initially denied the incest claims before admitting they were actually true. Trent Thorburn was sentenced to four years in jail and he ended up serving 16 months before being released in January of 2018. Both Julene and Joshua Thorburn were charged with perjury and attempting to pervert the course of justice. They both pled guilty to all charges and agreed to be witnesses for the prosecution. And them agreeing to do this really broke down that barrier of family loyalty. Joshua ended up being sentenced to three months in jail and Julene was sentenced to 18 months. Trent, Joshua and Julene are now all out of jail and living back on their property as far as I could find out at least. Judge Craig Chowdhury stated in the court that once Talia's body was found dumped on the banks of the river, any sense of human decency would lead one to say, I can't keep this secret anymore. This is horrific. This poor girl has been killed. Her body left like the carcass of an animal. It's hard to think of a worse situation that would lead them to have some pangs of conscience. Fast forward two years to May of 2018 and Rick, who initially indicated he would be fighting all of his charges, pled guilty to killing Tiali Palmer. He was sentenced to life in prison with a non-parole period of 20 years. By pleading guilty, Rick Thorburn managed to avoid a trial, which meant he also avoided having to explain what he did to Tia and why he did it. And that is the case of Tiali Palmer. Thank you so much for being here today and for listening to Tia's story. Thank you to my incredible patrons you're all absolute stars until next time stay vigilant stay safe and i will see you soon